from the Penn Libraries. In the last video, we saw how we can draw text boxes and use them as frames for our text on the slide. In this video, we're going to see that in the similar way, we can draw all kinds of objects on the slide. I'm going to insert a new slide in our presentation and I'm going to choose the bl blank layout. The drawing in PowerPoint is quite easy due to a number of auto shapes that come with the program. If you take a look at the drawing toolbar at the bottom of the screen and just in case you don't have that toolbar remember from one of the first videos that you can go to the view menu and under toolbars make sure that the drawing toolbar is selected. So once you have the drawing toolbar you can go to the auto shapes menu and you will see there is a little arrow next to the auto shapes word and whenever you see an arrow like that it means that there is a menu behind there. So we're gonna click on the arrow and pull up the menu and what you'll see is um, quite a few categories of shapes which you can use and there are quite a few there, all kinds of shapes and lines and connectors, etc, etc. So just pick one that you like. I'm going to pick a uh, star. And now you will notice that the pointer has taken the shape of a cross. This means that you're in drawing object mode. Remember when we were drawing text boxes, the cursor looked like a upside down cross. Now it's just a cross. So the way the pointer looks gives you information about what you're about to do. So I'm ready to draw my object. I will do it exactly the same way I drew the text box. I will click and hold down the mouse button and I will drag the mouse across the slide and when I have the shape as I want it to be, more or less, I will release the mouse button. And here it is, my object. And what I can do is I go to the Format menu and select Auto Shape. Again, different word. Remember we had Format Placeholder at first, then we had Format Text Box. Now we have Format Auto Shape. But again, the dialog looks the same and we can do similar things. We're gonna change the fill color. I selected yellow for my star. You can have a border or not. It's up to you. Um, actually I'm gonna select a different color here. I'm gonna select light green. Here is my object. Remember the round handles? You can use them to resize either side. Now, remember we had the green bullet so we can rotate the object. But now look, we have something new. We have this little yellow square on the object. Now this yellow square manipulates a different dimension on the object and this uh, yellow square does a different thing depending on what object you use. It doesn't do the same thing on all objects. So in the star that we have selected, if I click and drag, you see that it changes the th thickness of the star. Okay. In other objects it does something different and we're gonna see that. Let's select another object. I'm going to select a banner, a horizontal scroll. I'm drawing my scroll. Same idea. I won't format the colors. I think that's pretty clear by now. Now I have another yellow square here and this time this makes the scroll thinner. It gives it more depth. Let's try another one. I'm going to try this banner. Now notice here I have two little yellow squares. So let's see what these yellow squares do for this object. 
the one controls the width of the surface and the other one controls the angle and the depth of the object. Let's try one last one. Little smiley face and only one square here but a very big effect. If you want to format the objects, as we saw before, the dialog is the same, the, exactly the same thing that we saw for text boxes and placeholders, colors and lines, size, position, and no text box in this case. Now, you can combine different kinds of objects. For example, let's say that I wanted to add some text on this scroll. Let me make it a little bigger. Remember that text does not float on a slide, so I cannot just click here and start typing. I need a text box for that. So I can select the text box. In this case, I clicked on the icon text box, or you can go through the insert menu, same idea and click and drag and draw a little text box in there and I'll type some text and now my scroll has an inscription. Now there's nothing wrong in leaving this as it is. There are two objects one on top of each other but what I could do is group the two so that they behave as one because the way it is now you see that let's say if I decide to move everything up I grab the scroll, then I need to get the text, and then I find exactly where it was. Um, in this example, of course, it's not that big of a deal, but when you do have an important collage and the, the exact position of the objects on this collage is very important, then this may get a little um, labor intensive. So, in order to avoid these problems, we can group these two so that they will behave as one. Now, to group them, I need to select them first and I can select these two objects in two ways. One is I can click somewhere out of both objects, hold down the mouse button and drag and I draw this dotted rectangle around the objects. When I release the mouse button I see the handles of both objects which means that they're both selected. That's one way to do this. Another way to do it is to select an object first and then hold down the control key. You see when you hold down the control key the shape of the cursor, your pointer changes, has a little plus sign. This means that you're in multiple selection mode and then select the second object and of course as many as you like. When you do have selected all the objects that you want to group, then you will do, go to the draw menu at the bottom lower left corner and select group. Notice that this option will not be available. It will be gray, grayed out just as the ungroup command is now. If you haven't selected at least two objects, you have to select two more objects in order to see the grouping command. So now I have selected two, I, sel I click group, and now these two are behaving as one. You see I can move them as one, I can resize them as one, and at any point, if I change my mind, I can go back to the draw menu and ungroup them. And once I ungroup them, I need to click somewhere outside away from the objects and then I can grab one of the two only. Let's talk a little bit about the order. You can layer objects one on top of the other. For example, now that I, uh, I moved the star in the same location with the scroll and the text, the star I had inserted first, if you remember. So because it was first on the slide, it goes on the bottom. So I cannot see it much. Then I have the scroll and then I have the text. If I want to change the layers, let's say I want to bring the star in front, 
I need to select the star first and then I can go to the draw menu and under the order I can choose to bring it to front or bring forward. The difference between these two is if I choose to bring it to front it will bring it on top of everything else including the text for example. If I choose to bring it forward the star will just come one layer forward. I'm going to bring the star all the way forward so I'm going to bring it to front. You can see now it's on top of everything else. If I move it, it covers the text as well. I can choose to send it backward which will bring it one layer back only. So you can see that the, the text, my text is on top of the star but the star is on top of the scroll. Then I can choose bring it, send it to back, which again, in this case, send my text all the way back and I don't see it anymore. Okay, so this is um, a way that you can play with the layers of the objects and you can create transparencies and a lot of interesting things. Um, it's just sometimes challenging to find the object in the first place in order to select it. For example, now I don't see my text at all. So if I want to bring the text forward, it will be hard for me unless I'm willing to move both of these objects. Another alternative would be to select these objects and send them to back until I see my text again. And there I go. That's all for text on slides. In the next videos we're going to start seeing how you can add notes and headers and footers.